How's your defense gotten better? Well, Doug, I think uh, it's always been pretty good. I think we've just been able to um, just improve as the season's gone on, as we've gotten guys uh, playing you know, more, more and more, getting more experience, playing different spots, tinkering with some lineups, and it's gotten just so much better down the stretch here. Uh, I just think because of practice and experience and all the different things we've seen against our defense during the course of the year, we've been able to make adjustments more quickly now as the season uh, is in its final weeks. You know, uh, Richmond, obviously, located in the city of Richmond. So mm-hmm. is VCU. I- I'm wondering what what the city was like. I know you guys weren't home very long, uh, but what's the city been like to be in uh, before you hit the road for San Antonio? It's great. I, you know, the, the city is a buzz. You know, there is a, this is a basketball town, and this is obviously the pinnacle of, of anything that we've – uh, we've experienced here in Richmond, so uh, everybody's excited. There's a, a huge VCU slash Richmond, I should say Richmond slash VCU party uh, with the mayor downtown today. Uh, there's send-offs for both schools uh, heading out heading out down to San Antonio because we're both going to San Antonio, uh, and it's it's just been great. You know, it's it's obviously all over the news, and people are really excited with uh, with just how uh, just how significant the accomplishment is for one team, let alone both teams. Oh, wait, so you, you, you kind of caught yourself. Truth be told, is it a Richmond town or a VCU town? No, it's a good question, Doug. It, the, the, schools are, the schools are very different. You know, Richmond is a private school with a little less than 3,000 students, and VCU is a very big state school with, you know, over 20,000 students. We have a suburban campus. Their, their campus is, you know, right on Broad Street in Richmond. And so I, I don't know. I, I think that uh, we certainly get a tremendous amount of support and would never complain about that. Um, I, I think it might, it might be pretty well split just, uh, just as far as fans go. Obviously, I think VCU would have a lot more alumni, but I think as far as fans go, it might be pretty, pretty well split. Richmond head coach Chris Mooney joining Mike and Mike in the morning, ESPN Radio, ESPN2, Doug Gottlieb in for Greeny. So now you face Kansas, the number one seed uh, in, in your region. What obstacles, what roadblocks do they, do they hold for you? Well, many. Uh, you know, starting with the Mars Twins and how great they're playing, uh, you know, they, what's most impressive about them is they have uh, a lot of great players. You know, I'd say one through eight, they have great players, star players, highly recruited players, but they play so well together. They really move the ball extremely well. Uh, they share the ball. They make the extra pass. Uh, it doesn't seem like they just have guys who are out to get their own and forcing shots. That's that's really what I'm most impressed with, and that's what I think makes them so difficult to guard. If you can guard, you know, a team that's a one-man team or a two-man team, uh, that's a little bit easier. But for these guys, they share the ball so well, and it's really going to be difficult to defend them. Um, it's really, really impressive. Um, ju- just how much they're able to share the ball and move the ball. Richmond head coach Chris Mooney, who played at Princeton, he joins us on the Subway Fresh Tech Hotline. Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio. Have you heard from uh, your former head coach, Pete Carrill? I did. I talked to Coach Carrill, and, and he's really excited. Uh, you know, we're all excited with uh, how the Princeton season and how great of a job Sidney Johnson's done and their game against Kentucky. Uh, he's excited for, for us here at Richmond. Um, you know, and, and he's just has pearls of wisdom uh, every conversation. So it's great to be able to talk to him and to stay in touch with him. He, you know, he's still with the Sacramento Kings. And uh, it's, it's always nice to be able to hear from him and, and, and get a little bit of advice from him. How do you keep it normal for the kids? You know, that, that's a great question, Doug, because this is a unique experience. You know, for Kansas, I'm sure there, there's a protocol because this is, this is most every year that they're playing in the Sweet 16 and beyond. For us, we just on the, on the plane, on the flight back from Denver uh, after the, the third round game, we just talked about how we're going to try to set up the week uh, and what's most important, how we're going to limit the media access to the players, when we're going to let the media access the players. Uh, and then when we distribute the information to, to the players, we just try to be as upfront as we can. You know, we know we want to uh, en- enjoy this and take in the moment, but also make sure that we're getting our, our preparation as, as solidly as possible and as normal as possible. So we, we mainly we just try to give the, the media access as, as limited amount of time as possible, you know, while not turning anybody away, but just trying to be when, – when they're down at the gym, that's when they're available for the media. 
and otherwise just trying to make sure that we go about our normal routine that we've been in for the last you know month and a half or so as, as you're winding down the season. You know when when we practice hard, when we do most of our work uh, in terms of in terms of preparation, when we're going to get our shooting workouts in, those kinds of things. Now, uh, Coach, uh, we really appreciate your time again. Chris Mooney, uh, head coach at Richmond, they get ready to face uh, Kansas, the number one seed in the Sweet 16. Congrats on getting there, and best of luck in that game against Kansas. We appreciate a few minutes of your time. Mike, from a former Eagle, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. All that. right, thank you very much, Coach. <laughs> Philly guy, right? I told yeah. you. Yeah, I know. I told, I'm I like know. hardcore yeah. Philly guy. Yeah. Dad was a Greyhound bus driver. Uh, I mean, he's. I told you, you could have gotten a Philly, Philly, Philly talk. You guys could have gone uh, – you guys could have gone back in the day. Chris Mooney, uh, head coach of Richmond, brought to you by Warner Ladder, the official ladder of the NCAA basketball championships, and the official ladder of professional contractors who rise above the rest. All right, quickly, let me ask you this. Yep. I asked the roadblocks at Kansas poses, what does Richmond need to do to win this game? <sighs> well, they have to find a way. The way to beat Richmond when they play their matchup zone, they play man-to-man, is to get the ball inside. They, they don't rebound well. Uh, Dan Giroux, who is a fifth-year senior at center, uh, is he's he's not that physical a presence in comparison to what they're going up against. And then Justin Harper, who's their four man, but I, I think will be a pro as a three man. They run a Princeton style where they spread you out. They run a lot of backdoor cuts, a lot of dribble drive action. Uh, they they just they kind of have a car, a, car, uh, a cavernous hole inside their right. defense. And the strength of Kansas's offense is the twins, who by the way also Philly guys, right? Marcus and Markeith Morris. Mm-hmm. And Kansas does a really good job of throwing the ball inside. They're going to have to find a way to match up to Kansas shooters while also protecting against the scoring of Kansas inside. they got to rebound the basketball well. If they do that, and if they can make Kansas come out and pressure them, now the – I mean, Kansas looked tight last weekend. Uh, this is a winnable game. Could be a heck of an upset if they could pull that one up. All right, up, up next.